It is very important that I start this video by saying that this is not a let's bash manifestation video. This is not a video about how manifesting doesn't work. This isn't a video about other creators or other coaches or other spiritual teachers saying anyone's wrong. This is actually a video about clarifying how manifestation does work. This is a video about unlearning some of the ways we might have wrongfully internalized some information about manifesting. Because with so much information out there and so many voices talking about it, which I think is actually a good thing, but the flip side of that is with so many people talking about it and parroting information, we can sometimes start taking in information in a way that's damaging to us or causing a psychological harm even. Unnecessary psychological harm at that because it doesn't even manifest well. So in this video I'm actually going to get personal about some of the things that I wish I hadn't learned in a certain way or things that I wish I hadn't internalized in a certain way and getting personal about the damage that it caused me. And the reason that this feels like a really important time to share this about myself is because I know I'm not alone. The things that happened to me very early on in my manifestation journey are so common. There's things that I hear my clients talk about all the time. So it's time to really flesh it out, talk about it, and really get clear on these things I'm about to talk about today. Let them go. From here on out, you have full permission to just really let go of these things I'm going to talk about and know that you don't need to be fearfully clinging to these ideas to get your manifestation. And because I am now a manifestation coach, I really do take the responsibility of properly giving you my information in a way that isn't going to harm you. I very much recognize that I'm a contributor to the manifestation culture. So if I'm going to be a contributor, I want it to be in the most clarified way that I can possibly deliver my information. Of course, I'm still human and you're human. And sometimes you'll interpret things that I say maybe in a slightly incorrect way, or I might say things in a way that isn't quite really the best way to say it sometimes. It is for that exact reason that I actually don't want to bash other coaches or other teachers because I know we're all human and we're trying our best to get across the message, the truth of our experience and how we have manifested very big things in our lives and how we want to help you to do the same. So I'm just starting this by saying that because I want you to know I really do take this seriously. I really do care about you. I really do want you to not go through the psychological pain and suffering and limerence and fear that I had gone through, I want you to be able to give yourself full permission to get out of that and to really just focus on what you do need to appropriately focus on to manifest your specific desires. Okay, so with that said, I haven't even introduced myself yet because some of you, some of you don't know me yet. You are clicking on this for the first time. My name is Genevieve and yes, ironically enough, I'm making a video about the damaging effects of law of assumption, but I am a manifestation coach. And you already heard my whole spiel about what this is gonna be about. So just let's keep rolling with it. I'm a manifestation coach and it is my goal here to really explain some of the deeper nuances of this, even sometimes talk about the psychological things that can happen to you when you are manifesting. I wanna break things down so that they're not so superficial because as I've often said before, when we keep things too superficial in manifestation world, that is when we can accidentally go to weird places in our mind and start to internalize information in the wrong way, interpret it in the wrong way, that again can sometimes cause us harm. So that's always my goal, but especially with this video, we're extra going into that. And it truly is my intention that this clarifies what you need to focus on as a manifester and what you can truly just let go. Things you might have accidentally picked up on your journey of learning about manifesting, but now you can truly just let these things go. If you like me as a coach and you would like to work with me, you can do a private session with me. And that is now open, by the way. So I've got my, my coaching is back open. So if you click the link below, you will be able to see my availability on my calendar again. So please book book in there if you would like to do a private session with me or you can do one of my courses and those are also all linked below the different kinds of courses that you can do so you can check that out. But if you don't want to do any of that you do not have to. I give you a lot of free value on this channel and I really only want people to do the coaching or do the courses if they genuinely feel like yes this is really helpful for me. 
I would like to go deeper in this. But if you, but never ever feel like obligated to pay me money because I'm saying that specifically because that's part of the manifestation culture that I would like to address. My personal mission is to just be genuinely helpful to the world, to help manifest what I've healed, help that to manifest throughout the world. It is not my mission to just take your money and leave you with nothing. Like that is so not my goal, but it's definitely becoming a part of the manifestation culture that people are noticing, oh, some coaches are scamming you or some coaches like they're just, you know, they're just in it for the money. They're just trying to market themselves or whatever. And again, I don't know, I can't pinpoint any one person I would want to call out in that way. I just know because I hear it from clients, I hear it in your comments, that that's a part of some of the perception that is happening in just manifestation teaching culture in general. And I would like to personally pull that back a bit because when that is your filter, that kind of like mistrustful and pessimistic and kind of judging, if that's the filter you're looking at this information through, it's not gonna land as cleanly and as deeply as it should because you're looking at it through the lens of judging potentially me or any other coach, the deliverer of the information. So I just wanted to briefly clarify that so that you can have a more pure relationship with this information because it's not about me, it's not about any other coach, it's not about any source that you might think, oh, they're trying to scam me or rip me off. And just get into a pure flow with the information I'm giving you. And again, if it lands and resonates, that's great. If it doesn't here, then maybe I'm just not the voice for you right now. I'm just not the teacher for you right now. And that's also totally okay. You are the opera and power of your life. It's up to you to decide what is your source of information and what isn't. Or even if maybe I am your source of information, but maybe there's a couple little things I say that you don't like, that's also totally okay. Like I wanna give you full permission of like, that's what the operant power means. That you can take or leave whatever you want and there's nothing there's no reason to even need to get into judgment or weirdness about it because it's like if you don't like something someone says you just don't take it on you just leave it take what you like leave the rest Whew, okay i'm very shiny as you can see because it is hot and I live in an older home at the moment, although that's probably gonna change soon, but I live in an older home at the moment and the AC, of course, is not working. So if you, I look sweaty and like I'm glistening, hopefully maybe an attractive way, but I'm not really sure, but I am glistening. It is because I'm very hot. This room in particular in my house tends to be the hottest. So, but I'm here for you. We're still doing this for you. We gotta get this information out even if it's hot. Okay, let's get deeper into this now. So one of the first things I wanted to personally talk about that I was personally very affected by was this idea that manifesting is easy. And this phrase is a little bit of a can of worms to bring up because obviously I don't want you to think that manifesting is not easy. I do want to program you with the belief that manifesting is easy. So I get why a lot of people on the internet say manifesting is easy. But the damaging shadow of that phrase for me has been that in the past, when something wasn't easy for me to manifest, I internalized that as, oh, so it's easy for everyone else, but not for me. There's something wrong with me because everyone else here on this forum or on this channel or on this Facebook group, whatever it is, they all seem to be like having success because it's so easy. And I'm the loser freak over here that's been affirming a hundred times a day and nothing's happening. So for me, it's not easy. And that must mean that I'm, something's wrong with me. I'm somehow a loser. This is not a good self-concept to take on, obviously. This is not a good mindset to accidentally start assuming because of a very simple superficial statement like manifesting is easy. So here's the deeper truth about this phrase, manifesting is easy. Manifesting is actually extremely subjective. What does that mean? That means that different things in your life are relatively easy for you subjectively to manifest and maybe other things are not because you have resistance. Resistance is a word I know we use a lot in manifestation world. And all resistance really means is that you might have a lot of layers of conditioning that are really against what you're trying to manifest in that particular area. To use a common example about this, manifesting a romantic specific person. There's, there's some people that, you know, subjectively for them, 
they don't have much resistance when it comes to manifesting love or romance or specific people. Then there's other people that maybe have a lot of old but long histories with rejection, abandonment, psychological issues, attachment issues, whatever you want to call it. All of these old experiences that you've had have added to your conditioning or your resistance. This is all subjective and relevant to you alone. So even though maybe for you your business life is really really easy to manifest or your social life or your family life is really really easy to manifest because it just is for you. Relative to you, maybe you have less resistance. You have less negative conditioning or negative beliefs in that area of your life. But when it comes to the SP, there's more resistance. There's more old conditioning to sort through. And all that means as well is that you just need to focus on certain things at certain times that might not be going all the way to the end end right away. And I'm already going on a tangent. That should honestly be another video, what I just said there. The point of me bringing this up is that there is nothing wrong with you if it's not easy to manifest. I really want you to let that go. Let it go that you're some sort of freak and everyone else it's easy for them to manifest but it's not easy for you because again I experienced that when I was new and I was reading Neville Goddard but I was also going online to see what people were saying online about this stuff. There was a part of me that kind of loved reading people's success stories but there was also a part of me that would get really triggered by it because I'd be like oh my god they just affirmed for you know two weeks to get their SP and here I am over here still still struggling with it. This is of course referring to a long time ago when I was focusing on my first SP. There will be a video eventually about my original SP journey. So much has happened for me around that. So much is still unfolding with that in a very good way, but I just feel like it's not cooked enough to really like make the full video about it yet. So that'll be coming, but it's just not, not quite cooked enough. So bottom line, there is nothing wrong with you if manifesting one particular thing isn't easy for you or even all things. I've even seen some comments where people say they can't manifest anything. It feels like nothing manifests for them. That's also fair enough. All that means for me is that you just need to focus on something else before going all the way to the end end. There might be a, a smaller step you need to manifest before going all the way to the end end. There might be something that you are bypassing in your conditioning that you're not really seeing about yourself and you're trying to bypass it by going to the end end and you're not really addressing a layer of conditioning that needs to be addressed. This is also why we put so much emphasis, or I should say I, I don't know who else is we, but I put so much emphasis on self-concept. Who do you really think you are? How are you really identifying? How are you really thinking? Because again, if you're thinking, oh my God, I'm such a loser because it, manifesting is so easy for everyone else, but it's not easy for me. Well, that's a huge self-concept issue. It's gonna be difficult to manifest anything from here on out if you're continuing to really take that seriously in your self-concept. So this is what I mean by chuck out this whole superficial judgment of like, oh, manifesting is easy, but it's not easy for me, and so I'm a loser. Of course, I want you to believe that manifesting anything is easy. I want you to have that belief. But if you don't genuinely have that belief yet, do not judge yourself for it. That's not helping at all. The more you judge yourself for it not being easy, you're going backwards. You're making this even harder for yourself. But I do have to throw in a random motivational story here. So I used to believe when I first, first started my manifesting journey years ago, it's now been like at least four or five years that I started getting into law of assumption specifically, but I definitely had a lot of doubt and skepticism about the manifesting specific people thing in particular. So because I had a lot of doubt and skepticism about that, I of course struggled at first a lot with it. It didn't feel easy. I didn't really see results easily because I was battling my own skepticism and all that fun stuff about it. But it's just funny to reflect on now and seeing my progress is that now it really is easy to manifest specific people. Like just the other night, there is a person I hadn't heard from from a while and I'm relatively non-resistant to this person. I just hadn't heard from them in a while. But the other night I just thought, I'm just gonna start affirming that they are calling me right now, tonight. They're calling me tonight. And I was just saying that, oh, I'm on a call with them tonight. Oh, I'm on a call with them tonight. Oh, I'm on a call with them tonight. And you guessed it, within about 45 minutes, that person texted me and was asking if we could talk. <laughs> So I'm giving you this story in this particular context because I want you to see that your beliefs can change, that you can go from someone who 
felt like manifesting SPs or whatever it is. It might not be SPs for you. It could be whatever. But you can go from that, not judge yourself for it not being easy, but then eventually get to a point where, whoa, all of a sudden it's changed enough within myself. I've changed enough in relation to this idea, this topic, that now it is really pretty easy to just affirm and then get movement like within 45 minutes. Okay, so that's that one. Now I wanna get to one that is probably the one that could almost make me cry because it's done so much damage to me. So before I got into Law of Assumption in particular, I was the kind of person who really wasn't thinking much about my thoughts. Like I would just go through the day, just think whatever. I was never afraid of my thoughts. I was never worried about what I was thinking. I was never really very self-judgmental, even if I was thinking very kind of weird thoughts. I just didn't have a lot of care and concern about the way I was thinking. I was very non-resistant to my thoughts, I should say. I was very easygoing on myself about my thoughts because I thought that my thoughts were really just between me and myself. They weren't really doing anything to anybody else, so I wasn't really that concerned about what I'm thinking. But getting into law of assumption in particular and getting so deep into the your thoughts create reality stuff. I started to create kind of a paranoid neuroses about my thoughts. I started to become afraid of my thoughts. If I started to think something that was against my wish fulfilled or if I started to think something that was like about the old story, I would like legit freak out and be like, oh my god, don't think that, don't think that because I was so afraid that anything I could think might ruin my manifestation or it might take me out of the wish fulfilled or it'll cancel out my manifestation or oh no, I had one negative thought a week ago and now it's manifested now and oh no, I shouldn't have thought that, oh my God, I'm being punished. I never thought that way before Law of Assumption. I never felt that way about, I never was mean to myself about something happening in reality and then blaming myself like, oh, because I thought that thought one week ago, that's why I caused this to happen. I was never naturally very self-punishing or fearful of myself. But like I said, I got into the thought part of Law of Assumption and it really created this neuroses. And it really makes me emotional because I know that I'm not the only one that has had to go through this, where suddenly you actually trust yourself a lot less because of Law of Assumption. You actually don't even feel very safe in your own thoughts in general because of law of assumption. And I remember even having some days in the beginning of my journey where I really wished that I had never <laughs> learned of this stuff. And I'm kind of surprised at how emotional I'm getting about this, but it's obviously good because I'm purging something that needed to be released now that I'm acknowledging it in a deeper way. But it just makes me so sad that I put myself through that because of something that was supposed to be helpful to me. What was supposed to happen was that I was supposed to get more confident in my thoughts because I was supposed to realize I can choose the way I think, I can choose the way I perceive things, so I'm supposed to be even less afraid of my thoughts because no thought is real until I take it seriously. But what I was doing at the beginning, and which I see, again, a lot of you guys do, is accidentally giving even more power to the negative or taking even more seriously thoughts that you never before would have even taken seriously. But now you're suddenly taking those negative thoughts seriously and it is accidentally causing negative things to happen to you and to your reality because what's happening is oh, you're just taking things seriously that you shouldn't be taking seriously. But when we learn that our thoughts create, we can accidentally internalize it in a really negative way instead of internalizing, oh, my thoughts create, that's super empowering. If you're learning this information through the filter of a low self-concept to begin with, it's just kind of natural that you're gonna incorporate, internalize that information in a way that's again, just negative, where you see the idea of my thoughts create, oh, that's actually scary, that's actually negative. I'm actually really freaked out now and now I'm like super neurotic about it. That is not how it's supposed to be. Yes, I want you to be mindful of your thoughts, but there's a really, really big fucking difference between being simply mindful of like, oh, isn't it interesting that I'm like thinking this again? Like, I don't need to think this. There's a really big difference between that and, oh my gosh, I just thought that, that's so bad, I should not have thought that, that's really, that's that's a big problem that I just thought that. And becoming hyper vigilant about like everything you're thinking so much that you don't even enjoy being in your own skin anymore because you hate your brain. I so wish that that had never happened to me and I wish that I had never internalized it to then 
for a little bit totally discredit law of assumption because it had caused me that much damage. This is actually a big reason, maybe even the reason, that I wanted to become a coach myself. Because as I got out of that, although I'll say the damage is still in there, this emotion that you're seeing is because there are still times that I have to remind myself not to be afraid of my thoughts. So I wanted to become a coach because I knew that if I was suffering this much just from learning that my thoughts create and internalizing it in an extremely negative way, then I knew there's gotta be a lot of other people that are struggling with this and I've gotta help them in the way that I've helped myself to overcome this. You realizing that your thoughts create should not feel like a threat to you. And not only that, but your thoughts are just a part of the creation process. What I have discovered as I've gotten deeper into healthy manifestation practices is that it's a little trivial and again superficial to assume that it's just a thought that creates. Because to go back to what I was saying about manifesting is easy and all the resistance stuff, thoughts easily create when there's an energy that you just sort of naturally deeply embody through your subconscious that matches that thought. Where there's almost like already an energetic momentum within you that makes that thought easy to create. So when you're already in a negative momentum where you're already really taking seriously all the negative thoughts, you're really afraid, you're giving a lot of that fear power to the negative thoughts, then yeah, it does feel really easy that whenever you have a negative thought that you're afraid of, it makes sense that that thought creates quickly or easily because the bigger momentum of your subconscious is already aligned with that fear power. And the opposite is just as equally true that when the dominant energy of you is just so non-threatened by everything that you could even have the craziest thought in the world and you just be like, oh, that was a weird thought, not gonna take that seriously. And you just have such a naturally faithful self-concept. And by that, I mean, you're just so self-trusting that you'll handle whatever comes your way, no matter what. You're also so genuinely self-loving that you really do feel like, yeah, I am a valuable person on this earth. I really do love and appreciate my inherent value. And it goes beyond the 3D. It goes beyond just a 3D sense of value. It's like a deeper God relating to self kind of value. When that really becomes more normalized to you, that's when positive thoughts create pretty quickly because they're already aligned with the deeper momentum of your energy. Anyway, this is kind of a little bit of a tangent now, but I just feel like I need to clarify kind of the opposite of what I want you to let go of. I want you to let go of being afraid of yourself. I want you to let go of being afraid of your thoughts. And I'm just so sorry to any of you who also went through a phase like I am. Maybe you're going through it right now where you feel like you just can't even trust the way you think. You, you're constantly questioning if you're thinking the right thoughts, if you're thinking enough of the right thoughts, if you're still thinking too many bad thoughts, you're like overly hypervigilant and just very afraid of yourself. So like I said, it's not even pleasant to be in your own skin and your own brain anymore because you're just freaking out about everything you're thinking. I just want to apologize to you on behalf of the manifestation community, which sounds really funny because I don't have the authority. <laughs> I obviously don't have the authority to apologize on behalf of the whole manifestation community, but that's just in my heart to be what I say to you right now. I just really want to give you permission to let that go. It is not helping you. It's not manifesting well. It's causing you psychological harm. And it's just, it's time to really let that go. You're not doing anything good for yourself by continuing to take seriously this constant like thought management and staying in your head like, oh my God, am I thinking the right thoughts? Just all that, just let it go, just let it go. Instead, focus on having healthy manifestation saturation times is what I call it, where there's times of the day where you go fully into saturating and your wish fulfilled or your new conditioning, whatever you wanna call it. You have times of the day that you go into that and then throughout the rest of the day, you are watching your mental diet, but that is the phrase that caused me <laughs> to become neurotic. But when I say watch your mental diet, all I mean is you're just being mindful of what you're thinking. It's really, it's total, because true mindfulness is compassionate, it's neutral, it's non-judgmental. There's like a certain air of confidence to mindfulness because you know that you are not your thoughts, you're the God observer of your thoughts. And that is why you can just pick the ones you wanna take seriously and the ones that pop up that you're like, well, that was weird, you can just let it go. Just let it float on down the stream of consciousness. You don't need to fight it. You don't need to react to it. 
Just let it go. That's the true kind of mindfulness I want you to have in your mental diet. You're practicing letting go of any thought that comes up that you're just like, okay, well, let that go, whatever. And then obviously the thoughts that are coming up that you do like, take those seriously in whatever way. You don't even have to force it. That's also the thing is like, I felt like I was kind of forcing my thoughts in a way that just felt uncomfortable. It didn't feel natural anymore. So just trust your regular stream of consciousness. And as I said, if you need to adjust in a mindful way at some points of your day, just do that, but don't make it a big deal. And don't make it mean that you are not trustworthy or that you're not doing this right. Okay, so this video has not gotten long enough. I've covered two big things. I probably am gonna make a part two about this because there were some other things I wanted to talk about. But for today, this really feels like enough for you. But please let me know if there's other things that you wanna ask me about, like asking me if, oh, I experienced this. Should I be doing this or should I be experiencing this? Like I'm here to debunk anything that you need debunked in your manifesting journey. I really wanna validate you in the right way because manifestation and law of assumption 100% does work, but you have to be wielding the sword of manifestation in a healthy way. Law of assumption is like a powerful tool. It really is like a powerful sword that you can either cut yourself with or create an empire with, depending on the way you are relating to the sword. So trust the process, trust yourself. Let me know your thoughts and questions down below, and I will see you guys in my next video. All right, bye.